Hello fellow Star Trek Strange New World fans, Dave from Geeky Guys here, uh, just coming on for another review, uh, this time for the latest episode entitled Lost in Translation, uh, which is a very Nyota Ahura based episode, uh, directed by Dan Liu and uh, written by Onitra Johnson and uh, David Reed. Um, Interesting episode, um, it's kind of the themes are kind of along the lines of communication, listening to do with the workings of the mind and the brain, um, dealing with hallucinations, nightmares, things like that, um, which is very interesting material to, uh, to work with and very, very relatable. Um, there's also a bit of a prime directive element to this as well. Uh, and there's also some nice scenes where um, it's very much related to the original series where we get to see some of those um, crew um, starting to build, initially build the relationships that we'll obviously see uh, become bigger and larger and more important later on. Um, obviously into later, into Strange New Worlds, but also into the original series as well. Um, so it starts off with uh, quite a nice shot actually of uh, the Enterprise going through a uh, Stellar nursery, um, and it's basically Pike uh, comments that it's the uh, the next new jumping off point for exploration for the next generation of explorers. Um, it's right on the edge of the frontier, on the edge of uh, Gorn space, uh, of all things. So probably not the safest area ever, but um, that's what he indicates. Uh, and there's a, a lot of deuterium in this nebula. Uh, and of course, you know, they use deuter deuterium as fuel. So the idea is that they can um, have this refinery there. And that's basically the start of the episode that um, the Enterprise and the Farragut uh, go out to this refinery. Um, it's been mentioned that there's been a few issues with it. Um, it's not working quite properly. Um, and quite humorously, um, Captain Pike is made fleet captain, uh, which sounds really good. And everybody's congratulating him on it. Um, but it's like, oh, it's temporary just while I'm on the Farragut overseeing this um, situation with the refinery and getting that working properly and getting this basically fuel station uh, set up. Um, there's quite a funny scene where him and um, Melissa Navia's character, Erica Ortegas, Tegas, is on about oh, doing donuts in the deuterium to fuel up, which is, uh, which is quite funny. Uh, kind of, it takes it back to, like, you know, cars and doing donuts on the, on the road. Um, so yeah, that was quite fun. Um, we also had a scene in the uh, mess as well where um, Spock is continuing his relationship with uh, Nurse Chapel um, and he's saying that he wants to report it to Starfleet, um, so there's a big thing in the rules about fraternisation between uh, crew members. Um, she kind of wants to keep it secret, keep, keep it down on the low, uh, so to speak, and you know, just let it just progress naturally and see where the relationship goes, which I think he, by the end of the scene, he kind of reluctantly agrees to. Um, also, James T. Kirk uh, comes onto the Enterprise um, to uh, to basically to help out, and uh, he ends up um, having a bit of a close relationship with Aura in the episode. Um, at, uh, when they first get to the refinery, she starts getting this weird booming sound um, that she's hearing and um, she tries to find it on the subspace channels on every channel she can't find it um, Pike wants to know if there's a recording there's no recording of it it's disappeared and um, so she has no idea what what this is um, and then it progresses and she starts to have uh, hallucinations um, she starts to see um, the Enterprise being attacked she sees um, Bruce Horak's character Hemmer um, kind of with a a bit of a melty face like he's come back from the dead um, and she doesn't know what all this means she goes to Dr Mbenga and he thinks it's deuterium poisoning and exhaustion which is basically causing these hallucinations uh, and then as it goes forward they realise that there's uh, a crew member on the uh, refinery station who's had the same uh, issues reported the same uh, medical occurrences uh, and basically with him it's got worse, it's like burnt out his language centre and he's now, um, they find him uh, trying to sabotage the refinery, they manage to uh, pellier the engineer and number one are on the refinery trying to get it working, trying to help him out. Um, they basically uh, pull um, Ramon, uh, his crew member, off uh, and he 
attacks Dr. Mbenga on the Enterprise in Six Bay and starts trying to sabotage the Enterprise. Um, so basically they then start thinking, oh, there's some sort of correlation here between uh, Ramon and Ahura. Um, so Kirk reviews his medical records uh, and they discuss it. And uh, basically to bring it to uh, short without spoiling it too much, uh, is that um, there seems to be some life forms in the deuterium and they're sending these messages to um, Ahura uh, she feels because she's a good communicator and good listener and she's empathetic um, that it's gone to her uh, and basically they realise that what they're doing by pulling the deuterium uh, out of the nebula is harming these life forms that live within it or a part of it um, and that's why they're getting all these horrible visions and the, the, this sound coming through to them all the time um, and they find out that they can't um, shut down the refineries they end up having to blow it up and um, there's uh, obviously lots more in there but obviously watch the episode and uh, you know you see the rest of it um, but yeah it's quite an interesting uh, episode so there's some nice points with Kirk and Ahura um, where you kind of get in the beginnings of that relationship um, there's a nice bit at the end where Kirk and Ahura are in the mess having a drink and uh, they invite Spock over to join them. So you've kind of got Kirk, Ahura and Spock at a table having a drink, having a chat, which is quite nice. See that relationship forming. Um, and there's also quite a nice scene in the mess earlier on as well where um, uh, Spock and uh, Nurse Chapel are playing chess and uh, Kirk, starts dissing Spock's, uh, Kirk starts dissing Spock's chess game and saying, oh, if he doesn't do that with the Queen, he's, he's, he's done. Um, so that's quite funny. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's an entertaining episode. It's a bit of a filler episode, I would say. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a massively standout, um, but it's very good. Um, and obviously with Kirk on the Enterprise, you also get obviously the um, relationship with Sam Kirk as well. Um, obviously they start talking about, you know, how their father has high standards and, you know, he never seems to be really proud of them, whatever they do, but like Kirk's the favourite son uh, and that, Sam Kirk basically gets a bit annoyed about that. Um, you know, that Kirk's always the golden boy, James. Um, so that's quite interesting. Um, yeah, and obviously Lan, uh, Nunin's son, gets to uh, meet up with Kirk again in the corridor and has a bit of a, a chat with him. And uh, he says that uh, she still owes him a drink. So it'd be interesting to see if that relationship does carry on down the line. Um, but yeah, decent episode, um, quite enjoyable. And some interesting themes explored, a nice bit of Prime Directive, new species of aliens in Star Trek, which is always good. Um, Save the members of the original series crew kind of connecting a bit in this series, which is good, building those relationships. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty good. And Ahura gets to kind of deal with death in a very visceral way and sort of begins to accept the death of her parents and her family and the shuttle accident that happened so many years before. Um, yeah, and I just think that uh, it is uh, a very good uh, episode uh, for those reasons and uh, go off and watch it and obviously mention in the comments what you think and uh, be looking forward to the next one.